Brian. Welcome to Auburn, Alabama. We've seen this game day tradition more and more in our weekly travels covering college football. But you know, for the folks in this tiny village in eastern Alabama, the meaning of the Tiger Walk runs deep within their soul. You see, it's an opportunity to actually reach out and touch the men that will wear their school's colors so proudly and to pat them on the back and say, War Eagle, one final time. There are few scenes quite like it anywhere in college football. will face their toughest test of the season as the second-ranked Florida Gators come calling tonight here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. It's the second-ranked Florida Everybody Gators, Franklin, and welcome once again to Saturday primetime college football here on ESPN. As you can tell from what's going on in this stadium, the background is just something really sensational. I'm not sure there's any team in America who takes better advantage of the home standing crowd and all their emotion than the Auburn Tigers. But I also can tell you this, there's not a team in America that relishes coming into your backyard and putting a whipping on the home team. Nobody enjoys it more than head coach Steve Spurrier and his Florida Gators. Last week they went into a very rowdy Tiger Den down at Baton Rouge. They silenced that crowd and won convincingly and they come into this one tonight having won here on the plains at Auburn three straight times. When I come back Mike Godfrey will be here and also Adrian Karsten as we prepare for the kickoff for tonight's meeting between the Tigers and the Gators. And here come the Auburn Tigers. the north end zone out the tunnel, the second-ranked Florida Gators. Tonight, here at Jordan-Hare Stadium, the number two team in the nation, the Florida Gators, and they have been difficult to play both home and on the road in town to take on the home standing Tigers. And the reason that the Gators have been such a hot commodity, this young man right here, Rex Grossman, only a sophomore, but yet some people are talking in terms of Heisman Trophy. And quite frankly, his numbers are better at this stage, this season, than Werfel's numbers the year he won the Heisman Trophy. Welcome once again. Mike Godfrey joins me here on the telecast as usual. Mike, the youngster's got the great offensive line. Uh, he has all the poise in the world, but he also has got some all-world wide receivers, which really help his cause. Yeah, Ron, he really does. Rex Grossman has thrown 20 touchdown passes. He has two really great wide receivers. Starts with Jabari Gaffney and Rache Caldwell. 58 catches, both of them. 1,000 yards, 12 touchdown passes. They run great routes, and they're long ball threats. Mike, realistically with the Auburn Tigers, they are at home. Great emotion in the stadium, but they're heavy underdogs in this, and you know, rightfully so. What do they have to do to win this ball game? Well, they got to hope Florida plays down a little bit. The crowd's got to be into this game. They're fourth in the nation in pass defense, but they have a freshman, Carlos Rogers. They got Roderick Hood, a junior at the corners. I think they need rain and wind to help them. Well, according to the weatherman, 100% chance of rain tonight. I also understand that besides Jason Campbell, we might see two or three Auburn quarterbacks in this ball game tonight as you look at young Jason Campbell. Averaging almost 170 yards passing per game. Head coach Tommy Tuberville, third season here as uh, the head man of the Auburn Tigers. 18 and 11 and across the way, the old ball coach himself. 12th season as the head man of the Florida Gators. Almost 83% his winning percentage. Now the weather, I mentioned it's not supposed to cooperate tonight. You can see that big flag outstretched up there. It says 90%. We have seen 90. Some say 100%. There is a heck of a storm that is moving across the south. And hopefully we'll be able to play a part of this game under dry conditions. Old Glory really flapping in the breeze. Carter and Hood, the two deep men. Short. Going to come down to the seven-yard line, and this is Hood. 
Carter blocking in front of him, take it to the 22-yard line. Ball is loose, and they still scramble for it. It will stay with the Auburn Tigers. Now let's check with the third member of our uh, team. Here's Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, you need to know the weather could come at any time. There is the potential of one inch of rain per hour over the three-plus hours duration of this game. So both coaches who are concerned about that think right now the wind is the big factor, even though the rain isn't here. Any pass that isn't a tight spiral is going to be affected. Any bad snap on a punt or a field goal attempt that isn't a tight spiral could even be affected. The wind's blowing about 25 knots. It's that strong down here. Both coaches want to score as early as they can, take advantage of the dry conditions as long as they last. All right, Adrian, we'll look for your reports, and we'll keep an eye toward the sky here as Mother Nature is supposed to act up in any time. Campbell on first now. Under pressure, right over the middle. That's Carter. Carter cannot get out of the grass with the Florida tackler, Lido Shepard, and it gives us an opportunity to go through the starting lineups. Freshman, Taylorsville, Mississippi. Very green, but also very, very talented. Jason Campbell. Here's who he has with him as we look at the Bud Light starting lineup. Moore and Brown behind it. Willis and Tim Carter, who just caught the pass, the wide receivers. Lorenzo Diamond is the tight end. Second and five, they go with the running play. And this is Ronnie Brown, and he's going to be wrapped up in the line of scrimmage. LaFaber is the first man to come across along with Alex Brown to make the hit. And the offensive line for the Auburn Tigers. Simmons, he certainly is the best. The NFL scouts really like him. Ben Nolan in the middle is key. He has a bad knee and will have to keep a very close eye on him. Mike, what about the defensive front for Florida? Good front, but they're beat up a little bit. Alex Brown playing the run a little bit better this year. Third down, loss on the last play, and they need to take it out to the 34-yard line to keep this opening drive going. You see the blitz. Campbell steps up, going to be hit, and he will be sacked back at the 21-yard line. And it's going to be kicking time as Travis Carroll comes in and makes the tackle and gets the sack for the Florida Gators. And when you have a redshirt freshman, Ron, you're going to blitz him. Travis Carroll, the middle linebacker, was able to sack him on that play and uh, force this punt. David Duvall, who uh, does both the place kicking and also the punting standing back at the six yard line now keep this in mind he is kicking into that very very stiff breeze here in this opening quarter gets a good pass line drive kick it is very low off the side of his foot and there will be no return but it goes out of bounds at the 48 yard line of florida so let's take a look at the starting lineups for the florida gators and there is the man Rex Grossman out of Bloomington, Indiana, only a sophomore, 6'1", 223. Here, his cast of characters. Graham will have to watch him very closely. Bad ankle. He is starting. Roberts, the fullback. Caldwell and Gaffney, the wide receivers. And Aaron Brown, an outstanding tight end. And now we see that Robert Gillespie, number 20, has stepped in to start the ball game. Grossman on first down. Lobs the pass with the win, tipped and almost intercepted by Walker. Rashad Walker got in front of what was a very wobbly attempt on the part of Grossman, and you see the frustration on his face. He could have had an intercept on first down. Pearson Snell, Zach Zadalius, he's the bell cow right there in the middle, a six-year man because of injuries. And Mike, what about the front that they go up against? Yeah, this is a defensive line. Dexter Murphy and Marcus White got to give some big plays. Spencer Johnson, DeMarco McNeil, the best defensive lineman hurt. Two games in a row that Murphy has had to start. Grossman on second down. Delivers over the middle. Got him wide open. And that is Taylor Jacobs. And he will go inside the 30-yard line at the initial first down of the night for the Florida Gators. The linebackers for the Auburn Tigers, boy, they are very banged up here. Pounds and Brown are normally in the middle. Normally Thomas is on the left. He's having a start because the first two middle backers are hurt. And Mike, talk about the secondary. Carlos Rogers, a true freshman, playing at the corner spot. Roderick Hood, they got their hands full. It's Gaffney in motion to the top of the screen. They go with the draw play. Gillespie. Loses his footing, takes it to the 28, which is going to be a gain of one, and Sal is there to make the stop on him. The difference between Gillespie and Graham, Graham 
Sam is 215 pounds, and he's their muscle back. Runs very, very tough, but Gillespie, he's the wiggle guy. Very tough to stop, but if we do get the rainy conditions, you have to wonder if Graham's going to have to come into the ballgame. Graham McCarthan, 213-pound uh, third-team tailback, more of a north-south runner. Second down as the wind really starts to gust here in southeastern Alabama. Play action. Grossman over the middle. Oh, he had the tight end open and he overthrew Walker. He had him there. And in fact, Rache Caldwell looked as though he was open just on the other side of the tight end Walker. I think they had both of them open, Ron, and they, that's the play uh, Rex Grossman would like to have back. I think it's got away from him a little bit. Sometimes when you throw with the wind, sometimes the ball will take off on you. So it's third down, and here's the situation. The ball rested at the Auburn 28. They need to take it to the Auburn 19-yard line to get the first down. The wind in our microphone. It is really gusting here. Here comes an all-out blitz. Grossman's pass well underthrown and incomplete, and a standing ovation for this Auburn defense as they keep him out of the end zone. Marcus White with all kinds of pressure. So they get a 20-yard pass completion. But then the drive stalls as they go with the draw. Pass over the middle. And Mike's point is very well taken. Even if we get rain, water's one thing. But when you add this kind of wind to it, it even the best passers have trouble. Ron, I'd love to throw the football. But the, the one thing, guys, when they throw the football, they fear a little bit is the wind. Chandler with that attempt of 45 yards. Wind at his back. So he's got plenty of distance. And he's got plenty of accuracy. Florida goes on the scoreboard first. So we'll take a time out with 11.24 left in this opening quarter, and it's the Gators three and the Tigers nothing. Welcome back. As you can see right now, it is a beautiful night in Auburn, Alabama. Florida, three to nothing. Mike, talk about the opening drive. Well, I think it was a good drive. Rex Grossman missed a couple passes, but this is the kind of, with the win, the pressure on Jason Campbell, the young quarterback, he's got to get some first downs because Florida will build up a lead here in the first quarter. Petrovich with the kickoff. This one much longer coming down to Campbell at the goal line. Carter, I beg your pardon. the man who broke the long run against LSU here last year, and he's going to take it all the way down to the 32-yard line of Florida. Daryl Dixon made a touchdown-saving tackle. Talked about Tim Carter's speed, and they needed to get field position. Well, Tim Carter, a track athlete here at Auburn, gives him the good field position for the red shirt freshman quarterback. Mike, you remember that uh, return he had for a touchdown that uh, well, brought he, this crowd back against LSU last year after they had scored. He is a number one. He's a first round draft pick in the NFL. Campbell with the handoff against Ronnie Brown. Very short yardage, just shy of the 30. And let's finish the lineups. We did not get an opportunity to do so. The uh, the linebackers for the Florida Gators, there's the key right there in the middle. Andre Davis, injured knee last year, didn't get to play. And, and I'll tell you, buddy, rallies around him. Mike, talk about their secondary. Secondary is good. Lido Shepard, for the first game this year, he's been healthy. So uh, we expect some big plays out of him tonight. Brown comes to the sideline. Cassinius Moore, number 22, is the lone setback. It's Watkins in motion. Campbell right over the middle, lobs the pass, and got that one complete to Marcel Willis. Okay, Marcel is healthy for the first time. He had an ankle, which he entered back in training camp, and uh, he's not limping for a change, and they need him desperately. Ron, here's where Florida's so good. Defensively, this year, they make things happen. Now, Auburn's got great field position. they got to turn this into something. Now, uh, with this wind in their face, uh, they, they've got to make something happen here. Third down and six. They need to take it to the Gator 23-yard line. That's Moore in motion. He's got him open as a safety bound. Now 
Campbell runs and throws against the grain. That one's going to be incomplete. And a very difficult throw because the closer he got to the sideline, that worked as a defensive man as well. Yeah, now you wonder about the field goal attempt. David Duvall's an excellent kicker, but you've got this heavy wind in your face, so you may just go for it on fourth down. Jason Campbell, the coach has talked about, he appeared tentative versus Mississippi State last week. Mike, they're going to go for it. And I'll tell you now, with the win in warm-up tonight, Duvall kicked one 64 yards and had some space to spare. But now, as you said, he's going into the teeth of a very, very tough win. This is going to be placed down at the 35, so it's a 45-yard attempt. Good pass, plenty of distance, and plenty of accuracy. I'll tell you, that is a heck of a boot, folks, into a wind that is gusting 25 to 30 miles an hour, and Duvall just hooked that thing right in there. 9.39. Left in his opening quarter, and we are tied. So as you watch it, go home. The Auburn Tigers are on the board, and they have not in this game at three. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Nivea for Men Aftershave Ball. More evolved skin care. And by Budweiser. With the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. Mike Godfrey's favorite spot here on the play is Cheeburger Cheeburger. Said he wanted, he to, didn't make it to, wanted to eat there because he couldn't say it. <laughs> Boy, the ball gets a foot into this one. That's going to be nine yards deep in the end zone. And again, I reiterate, into the this young man has uh, quite a leg on him. Brian Kenny, let's check with you for the first time tonight. Brown, we go to the Pac-10. Pete Carroll opened up his uh, collegiate head coaching career with a win, but has since lost four in a row here against Arizona State. After a USC interception, Sonny Bird will go in, and now USC has a 21-3 lead. Ron, Mike? Well, that's a different situation. They have, uh, yeah, they they have finally had to come behind. Yeah, <laughs> but they have had some tough losses. We talked about last week. Three games that all were in their grasp that they have uh, lost. Gillespie continues to work a tailback for Florida, subbing for the injured Ernest Graham. Grossman with the audible and gives it to Gillespie. Hit in the backfield as a flag goes down, and that's Torber. The big sophomore from back Rouge got deep penetration, and now let's check the marker. Bill Goss, the referee tonight, discussed with uh, the situation with his fellow officials. Illegal formation in the offense. The line didn't have seven players. And then he's declined. First of all, it looks like Auburn knows the Florida automatics. Watch this defensive lineman make a little move here. They got a little twist stunt coming on, expecting a draw. And Tobar he just runs right into Gillespie. Penalty is declined. It was a illegal procedure. They only had six men at the line of scrimmage. So it's second down and 14. Grossman's pass. Got it. Complete bounces off the tackle. This is Perez. And Perez is on his way. Loses the ball. They say, look, it's down. They're going to mark him down at the 48-yard line. And just like that, this is the reason, folks, in a game when you're playing against Florida, time of possession means absolutely nothing because they can move it down the lake to the field in a minute and a half. Yeah, and that's the fourth receiver, Carlos Perez, coming into the ball game. But the ball's right on the money by Rex Grossman. A bad tackle by Walker in the secondary, not wrapping up. So extra yardage for Perez. 32 yards in the pass play. Grossman sets up the middle screen. Gillespie bounces it to the outside. Has 10 and now counted off at 12, maybe 13 yards. Stanford Simmons will finally bump him out of bounds. But you see what I was talking about with his shiftiness. Nothing in the middle, and he bounces it to the outside. Ron, uh, DeMarco McNeil, the defensive lineman, He's going to drop back in this play. 
he's going to read it as a screen right here. Now, but he's not healthy, and he can't catch Gillespie. So, you know, because he's injured, he couldn't make the play. New line of scrimmage is the Auburn 39-yard line. If you just joined us, we're tied at three. Grossman sets in the pocket. Great protection. Lots it deep for the end zone and incomplete. He wanted number 17, Rache Caldwell. Now, on that deep ball, when you're putting air under it, there's more air being picked up here in the stadium. And that is it. That's It's going to be difficult to throw an accurate pass anything over 10 or 15 yards. I like what Rache Caldwell did, though, because all of a sudden Rex Grossman gets moving to the outside. Rache Caldwell did the receiver rule of just stay deep and uh, keep moving with the quarterback. He just did ran out of room. Second down and 10. About to go under eight minutes left to play in his opening quarter. Crowd really making a lot of noise trying to help out that defense. Auburn creeps up. Here they come. Blitz off the corner. Flag is down. And one of the things, of all the good things that this Florida team does, they are so efficient on offense, so efficient on defense. Mike, the bugaboo has been penalties. There's a delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, four second down. You know, I think what's probably going through Steve Spurrier's mind and the coaching staff is they've made some errors here in the first quarter. So you, you're traveling, uh, night game, you know, you, the crowd's into the game. Auburn's got everything the way they want it right now. They just got to come up with a stop here. You look at Graham on the sideline, Ernest with that ankle heavily taped. It happened in last week's game down in Baton Rouge. Short drop, quick throw. Caldwell gets it to the outside, and yards after the catch is where Caldwell really can get after you. He takes it down to the 36-yard line. Brian Kenny, what do you have for us? Ronald keeping the SEC, LSU and Kentucky. Rohan Davey here. He's going to find Michael Clayton, nine-yard strike. Made it 19 to three. Kentucky, though, has gotten closer right now. 32 to 10, LSU up on top. And unbeaten Washington State has just taken the lead on Stanford. Eight and change left. It's 42-39. Third down, and they need to take it down to the 29-yard line to get the first. Short drop, under pressure, fumbles the ball, and Grossman makes the recovery at the 45. It's Rashad Walker, who was coming on a blitz, who not only got the sack, but almost caused a turnover. And, Ron, the other thing, took him out of field goal range because uh, Rex Grossman getting sacked. They were at about the 36-yard line. He's lucky, very fortunate to get this football back. Rashad Walker with a good blitz. Leach, very high kick, and with the win, this one's going to carry, hit at the five, and Florida's able to can't get there in time. Thought they had touched it down at the one-yard line, but they were unable to do so. So it's touchback. Later tonight, I'm going to ESPN2, number 10, Fresno State, against Colorado State at 10 Eastern. The 5-0 Bulldogs are looking to run the table with hopes of crashing the BCS party at the end of the year. Quarterback David Carr already with more than 1,400 yards passing on the season. Ron, I was reading something in the paper where Colorado State, and, uh, they talked about keeping them out of the Mountain West, so uh, maybe Fresno State will have a lot to, a lot to say in that ball game tonight. Campbell hands it off to Brown, and there's nothing there. He's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Mike, did you see what happened right there? A dangerous situation. As Campbell came out from under center, either the center or the guard stepped on his foot, and it was almost a misconnection on the handle. Yeah, you see that a lot of quarterbacks that don't get out of there when they yeah. get the snap because and he's a hard long, to pull or a he's a long strider, too. Yeah. Take the center right there. Nowland steps on his foot. you got to get your feet out of there. Ian Scott is the man who made the stop. And again, it's Ronnie Brown who is in the game at tailback. McIntyre in motion. They set middle screen and thrown too low. Boyd Carter had a blocker in front of him. 
going back to that play where the center uh, stepped on the quarterback a lot of quarterback coaches will teach the quarterback to stagger their steps so that their foot all right foot is already back so you lead with the left and get out of there a little quicker you see Auburn trying to get the ball any way they that penalty's declined third down going to be third down to get it to Campbell anyway just simply because he can make a difference once he catches you're talking about Carter yeah he's the Barry Bonds of this Auburn football team because he's got the chance to go the distance every time he touches the football Ben Laird will talk more about him uh, last year's starting quarterback for the Auburn Tigers, and he is a graduate assistant here. Option play. Campbell going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked down for a loss. And Ian Scott again, who has two tackles on this series. And you talked about early that we may see a couple other quarterbacks. And I think Tommy Tuberville's talked all week about he's not able to run all his offense because he's got a redshirt freshman quarterback and he doesn't have a grasp of the entire offense at the line of scrimmage because everything changes when the defense moves around a little bit. So uh, we may see uh, Daniel Cobb and Jeff Klein a little bit tonight. Dead ball foul. After the play, there's a personal foul on the offensive team. It's fourth down. That's a tough penalty, Ron, because oh, listen, Mike, you don't want to give Florida any extra yardage. Well, they, this moves it all the way back to the nine-yard line. Ronnie Brown is a man who got into a little, well, watch it after the play here. And he goes down, and he gets hit by the Florida player, and then it happened right after that. So it means that this punt from Duval is going to come from five yards deep in his end zone, and he does not get off a good punt here. Line drive. Lido Shepard tries to take it to the right, cuts it up the field, and he's loose. At the 25-yard line and down to the 23-yard line as the tackle is made by Dansby. You go back to that penalty, Ron, that hurt, and then the wind because David Duvall's kick was real low, and so not a good coverage kick and uh, didn't go very far. Lido Shepard with a good return. You said Lido Shepard healthy tonight, first time. So 523 remaining the opening quarter and Florida who doesn't need any help gets great field position because of a second bad punt by Damon DeVall. Grossman looks for the end zone and it is going to be intercepted by 36 Robert Hood. Sometime you can go for the gold a little bit too much. Jabbar Gaffney uh, covered very well by Roderick Hood for the interception and great play by the defense of Auburn. 5-16 left in the opening quarter. We'll be right back. Sanford Hall. And as I said, right now, it's a beautiful night. That rain that we have anticipated has not come here. And Daniel Cobb has come to the ball game at quarterback. He is a senior transfer from the University of Georgia out of Marietta, 6'4", 226, replacing Jason Campbell. Puts it in the stomach of Moore, and Moore will go for very, very short yardage. And that's uh, going to be the end of the way. Brian Kenny. Ron, last two weeks, it's been K-State and Texas for the defending national champions, but Oklahoma struggling a bit here with Kansas. Jason White, two-yard touchdown pass to Trent Smith, and now the Sooners do have the lead. Now 16-3, to so just this second, Oklahoma scores again. We'll get you up to date, Ron. All righty. Our situation, we're tied at three as the first quarter is running down. Daniel Cobb, you see his numbers. He has played just sparingly. Transferred from over at the University of Georgia. Pressure's on. The boy just throws that one away. And I'll tell you something. Uh, they need to get that. Might have been. Was that pass with the line of scrimmage, Mike? Yeah, because I, it would go I, to. Yeah, I think it went in a little bit downfield, which is okay. But uh, you talk about Florida covering that. Now Florida had that covered for an interception if Daniel Cobb didn't throw it away. 
Jason Campbell's numbers, and I think we'll see him again tonight. But I think you're going to see rotating quarterbacks here till they can get something going in the checkoffs at the line of scrimmage. Carnell Williams into the ball game, an outstanding freshman. They call him Cadillac Williams. 5'11", 185. He wears number 24, and he lines up at tailback this time. So the third tailback for the Auburn Tigers tonight. As you see McIntyre in motion to the top of your screen. Right over the middle, wow, Carter had it in his hands, and Carter also might have been looking to Travis Carroll, number 55, who was about to come up and have a wide receiver sandwich. Yeah, I bet he, bet he would have had a, had a close to a first down here. Tim Carter on the delay over the middle, you and know I think the umpire, the umpire affected you're him. Yeah. You're exactly but, right. But you do receiver drills every day where somebody puts their arm around the ball to d try to distract you, so that's no excuse. Well, let's see if uh, Duvall can have more success than he did the first two times into the wind it really gave him trouble Damon gets a good pass and here's a ball like kick the crowd goes crazy it is all the way back over the receiver's head and he's going to take it at the 24 and is tackled immediately Lino Shepard 54 yards in the kick and it's going to be one on the return Rashad Walker who's been outstanding tonight is the man down on the special teams to make the tackle Tomorrow morning on ESPN, week five of Sunday NFL Countdown. Chris Berman in the game with the Rams, high-flying wide receivers. Curtis Martin, the Jets, workhorse in the backfield. And Peyton Manning. Ron, on the last play that he had intercepted, Robert Gillespie, the running back, after the fake and the run, was wide open. So I'm sure they're going to come back to that soon. This is Gillespie. Gillespie pounded at the line of scrimmage and pushed back by Philip Pate, a big sophomore. And Ron, I mean, <laughs> yes, I'm with Ron. Uh, Mike, <laughs> talking to yourself. I'm telling you, well, I always do that. <laughs> they are really having trouble, speaking of Florida, of running the football well, against this uh, Auburn defense. Graham's the runner. Uh, he's more of the plow horse guy that you need in the backfield. Gillespie's a better pass receiver. The word from the bench in the warm-ups on Gillespie. We will play him if we need him. And the way the running game's looking right now, they may need him before the night is over. Grossman lobs it over the middle, has this one complete, and that's Gillespie as they get him out of the backfield and Philip Tate again making the tackle. Brian Kenny. Ron, while we were showing you the last Oklahoma touchdown, Oklahoma was doing this. Once again, Jason White been alternating with Nate Hibble in the air. Trent Smith once again, 17-3. Sooners lead Kansas. Third down and three, our situation for the Florida Gators. They need to take it to the 36-yard line to pick up the first down. And the crowd again on their feet, and they are aroused at the way this defense is playing the number two team in the nation. Grossman. Incomplete looking from Gillespie again and very dangerous as it went off his fingertips. And Ron, they had that pass oh, that uh, Rex Grossman just threw it too hard, but it's wide open. It's been open three straight times, and he's just got to be patient and take that throw. What do you think Steve is uh, talking to him well, about right now? I think he's trying to settle him down a little bit. He looks like he's a little nervous here in the opening uh, frame. Leach waiting for the snap back at the 20-yard line. Here's his kick, driving spiral on the run. Catch is made at the 19, that's Hood. 30, 35, still on his feet and taken across the 40-yard line. And right now, one of the differences in the ball game, Auburn defense and Auburn special teams. Eight yards in the kick and 22 on the return. Adrian Karsten, uh, what do you got for us, big guy? Steve Spurrier to Rex Grossman. Rex, you need to know how strong this wind is. You can't throw the ball the way you do all the time. You've got to take something off of it because that wind is so strong, about 25, 26 miles per hour. When you throw over 10, 15 yards, you've got to take something off the ball. You're just overthrowing your receiver. Even on the short pad, it's too run. You know, Adrian, it's like all of a sudden the nine iron becomes like a five iron. <laughs> I mean, you can take it a long way. Daniel Cobb in the ball game for his second series. Sets in the pocket, got a man open on the near sideline, and caught by the running back more. Natillo made the tackle. That is a really nice touch 
Got him in man coverage and got a back versus a linebacker. Number 22, Cassinius Moore is going to come out of the backfield and he's going to go down the sideline against Mike Natillo, a linebacker. You like that matchup? Every play. Good concentration bringing that ball in. So Daniel Cobb, very impressive on that pass right there. As you can see, just laid it right in to the running back's arms. About to go under two minutes to play. First quarter. Cobb looking, drills this one deep over the middle, tipped in. That one could have been picked off after the tip. Marcel Willis is the man he wanted. We met him in Georgia when he was making an unofficial visit during the season. And Jim Donnan, the Georgia coach at the time, was very high on Daniel Cobb. And Daniel Cobb transferred out of there. Then nobody could beat Quincy Carter out, so they all left. Uh, uh, a group of them took a bus out of there, and uh, Daniel Cobb arrived back here in Auburn. Talked to him after practice on Thursday afternoon, and he's very interested in this business. He wanted to come around and look at the facilities yesterday, the, uh, the remote truck and the, the way the guys set up the stage. Stadium. They go for the running play. This is Williams and uh, Cadillac Williams. No gain on the play is Alex Brown, uh, the senior out of White Springs, Florida, makes the tackle. And Steve Spurrier said the other day we asked him about Alex Brown. He said he's not taking a play off. The, in past years, he, he'd work real hard, work real hard, and take one off. And uh, yeah. but he said he's not taking any off this year, and he's playing to run much better. Mobile Offensive coordinator and also the quarterback coach. You see Florida showing blitz. And they back off of that, but they do bring the linebacker, and the ball is live. And what a one-handed catch by DeAndre Green. The sophomore out of Pitchard, Alabama, against Lingo Shepard. Yeah, they're proud of him in Mobile. Uh, DeAndre Green, a very good wide receiver. Six foot one, 225 pounds. Great athlete in high school. We talk about concentration. We talked about uh, Ronnie Brown uh, making, Cassinius Moore making a great catch. And then there was a great catch by Green. Mike going to promise you if he had tipped the ball and had not brought it down, it's fourth down. That ball could have been intercepted. They're going to go for it on fourth down and three. They need to take it to the 19-yard line. Zings this one. Has it complete? Incomplete. Did he hold on? They're going to give it They're to him. Give it to him. They're going to give him completion to DeAndre Green. And the Florida staff, Steve Spurrier, is out about five yards on the sideline. They're going to talk about it now. One of the officials came in, marked it. Uh, one of the other officials came in. Well, you know something? They're going to give it to him. They're going to give it to him, and his knee was on the ground when that ball was knocked out. Just Scott is the man who made the defensive play. But in looking at the replay, the ball was gathered. It, he did have possession, and his knee, his left knee was on the ground as it was being knocked out. First down order. Okay, a gunny call by Tommy Tuberville going on the fourth down situation. As you see, both coaches' uh, reaction. And Daniel Cobb has stood in here. Now, I'm sure the Florida coaches up here, they're in the booth next to us. They're going to heat him up a little bit now because he's had far too much time to sit back there in the pocket. Two seconds, one second. That is the end of the first quarter. And I'll tell you what, folks, they are standing and they are cheering here on the Plains tonight and for very good reason. The Auburn Tigers, huge underdogs in this ball game, in the first 15 minutes have played Florida to a standstill. So we are tied at three at the end of the first 15 minutes of play, and the Auburn faithful simply could not be happier. Grande played an inspired first quarter. They're after uh, one of the top teams in the country here. In fact, a team, Mike, that I think does as good a job on the road over the years as, as anybody has ever done. Without a doubt. Movement at the line of scrimmage in the pass. In the end zone, caught out of bounds. And 
Now, is this going to be on the defense, Mike, or was yes. there an offensive movement? I think, I think it's on the defense. And Scott, I know, came into the neutral zone. Defense was offsides at the snap. Five yard penalty, repeat, first down. And that was a wise throw by Daniel Cobb. Game tracks, and in case you just uh, joined us. Florida, 71 total yards in that first quarter. Normally, he doesn't get his uniform dirty, but uh, Auburn's put a lot of pressure on. That pass intercepted, and now it's a first and five for the Auburn Tigers, now inside the 15-yard line because of an offsides penalty. Running play to Cassinius Moore, close to the 10-yard line. Short of the first down, though, is Andre Davis makes the tackle. Last week against Mississippi State, uh, Cassinius Moore rushed for 160 yards on 20 attempts, an average of eight yards every time he touched the football. So again, Moore and Brown set in an eye formation. Both are tailbacks. They do not have the fullback in the ball game. Second and short, they'll go with the running play again. Has the first down and more inside the five, and it's more. It'll be first down and goal. Auburn Tigers will spot it at the three. Todd Johnson defensively for the Gators. What impresses me about Auburn's offense, they're playing with a lot of confidence. Ever since Daniel Cobb came in this football game, they've settled down a little bit. We talked about the redshirt freshman maybe not checking off to the right play at the line of scrimmage. Well, Daniel Cobb has control of this offense right now. First down and goal. Three-yard line. Gators jamming up at the line of scrimmage, trying to keep the Tigers out of the promised land here. Delay the game. Boy. Sometimes you take a little bit too long trying to figure out what the front is, and the play comes in too late. On the offense, it's a five-yard penalty, first down. What a, what a difficult situation to get the five-yard penalty here because now first and goal from the eight-yard line. Set up on the wrong side. They're flipping down. They're really really confused on offense. They got to take the timeout. And the head coach always goes to the coordinator and says, What's happened? So let's take a timeout. We're still tied at three. Brian Kenny back with you and Washington State 10 unanswered points in the fourth quarter they beat Stanford 45 to 39 6 and 0 overall 4 and 0 Pac-10 Ron So the situation first down and goal the 8 yard line of the Florida Gators Daniel Cobb, a senior out of Marietta, Georgia, who Mike talked about, who transferred from Georgia, spins, hands it off to the tailback, breaks one tackle, that is Moore, and he takes it all the way down to the one-yard line. Lido Shepard makes the tackle, but he was carrying people with him. Pretty good job by the offensive left side of the line. Kendall Simmons, uh, McGarry, the left guard, Ben Nallen, the center. You see the, the good blocks. Lorenzo Diamond really starts it. Lorenzo Diamond, the tight end, number 49, is uh, the guy that Mike's talking about. And he's up front blocking on the play. Second down and goal. Six inches away. LeFaber is down at the bottom of that pile. Ron, I'd come right back with the same play because he went airborne a little bit too soon. And he, he got, uh, if he get, waits a little longer, he'll score on that play. Cassinius Moore waited a little bit too long to go off. He's close enough to score, but uh, I'd come right back to it much distance between the football and that end zone line. Third down and goal. Same play, other side. 
Florida got penetration. He's not going to score. Mike, what do you do? You kick the field goal or you try it again? I don't think you're going to win with field goals against Florida. I think you got to go for the touchdown. Todd Johnson this time, the junior out of Sarasota, number 26, makes the tackle. Ron, I thought it'd be better to go over the left side behind Kendall Simmons. I'd, I'd run the same over-the-top play with Kendall Simmons behind him, the left tackle. And Lorenzo Diamond, the tight end on the left side. Fourth down and goal. Just inches away for the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> Quarterback sneak. the stack. You know one thing I, I see on a lot of quarterback sneaks? The fullback or the tailback will hit the quarterback in the back to move the pile. And that we got called for that one time in 1975 down at uh, Louisiana Lafayette. We were playing them Southwest Louisiana and we got to help the quarterback in the end zone. They penalized us. There's a touchdown. After the play, personal foul. So right now, the Auburn Tigers riding the wave of emotion that is inside this stadium. And for the Florida Gators in the first quarter and the early going here in the second quarter, penalties that normally don't come, although I said they've had some problems with penalties this year, maybe just a little bit lack of focus. But right now, we'll take a timeout. 11.03 left until halftime and our new score, Auburn 10 and the Florida Gators 3. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Tostito Scoops, the Dip Lovers Chip, and by Saturn. Now with two distinctly different car lines, the L Series and the S Series. Uh, one of the many ceramic tigers uh, in downtown Auburn. I think that's down at Tumor's Corner. Uh, they're everywhere around the city. I uh, would love to have the concession on those. Yeah, somebody's making money. <laughs> <laughs> Ten to three, our score. The Auburn Tigers leading. As you look at uh, Steve Spurrier on the sideline, conferring with uh, Rex Grossman. And as we mentioned, this quarter, Rex is going to be throwing into the teeth of that win rather than with it. Daniel Cobb has brought this crowd back in this game and, and the offense. He's done a great job since entering this game. Leno Shepard and Ratliff, the two deep men, preparing to receive this kick, but I'm wondering if it'll be returnable because of him kicking with the wind. Well, maybe about three yards deep, but he won't attempt to bring it out. We've talked about the weather and its potential, and take a look at this right now. We are in Lee County. Lee County right there, and you can see that it is not too far away, and there's a lot of red and yellow beyond the green uh, in there. So I would say, hopefully, <laughs> the wind will continue to move this front to the north rather than the northeast. But I don't think we're going to be so fortunate before the evening's over. Gillespie hit behind the line of scrimmage by Torber. Also Saul helping out on the play. And you see Graham kind of flop his arms on the sideline like uh, we're having a difficult time running the ball, and they are. Yeah, he mi they miss him a lot. But I tell you what, uh, Auburn's doing a very good job is crossing their defensive tackle and defensive end to mess up the blocking scheme of Florida. Well, look at this as far as early scoring dominance by the Florida Gators. 79 to 12 in the first quarter. Grossman changed his mind, get this one off complete, and that's Caldwell. And Caldwell up the sideline, he'll step out at the 28-yard line. Brian Kenny. Ron, other games in the SEC. Watch Carlos Hall here for Arkansas. Daniel Weaver going to tie it up for South Carolina. No, snuffed out. Hall saves the day. Lou Holtz takes the first loss, 10-7. Arkansas and Mississippi State dropped by Troy State, 21-9. Ron, Mike. 
10 to 3, our score, Auburn. The pitch goes back to Gillespie, runs it right back into the middle of the field, and I'll tell you what, he didn't get the first down. The linesman says it is at the 29 and a half. Mayo Sal makes the tackle, and at this position on the field, Steve Sprayer just really doesn't have a choice. He can't gamble. He's got to put the ball away. So Matt Leach will have to come on to do his number. Hood is the deep man for the Auburn Tigers, and he's dropped off to around the 35-yard line. Leach gets a good pass. Good kick into this win. Wobbly spiral. Hood back to the 26-yard line. No fair catch. And he runs right into the special teams player, who is Matt Jackson. Well, tonight's Aflac trivia question, Rex Ghostman is in the hunt to become the first sophomore to ever win the Heisman Trophy. Since 1950, only two sophomores have finished as high as second. Can you name them? The answer, a little bit later on. LSU last week, they, uh, the players were trying to badger him a little bit, calling him Heisman early in the game, so uh, that didn't work. But uh, so far, Auburn's had all the answers here. They've been able to stop the run. That's number one. And when you can make even Florida go one-dimensional, it's a little bit easier to cover them. So Daniel Cobb in the ball game again at quarterback. It's Tim Carter to the top of your screen, the wide receiver, number two. Robert Johnson, the tight end, they didn't think he was going to play. He's been injured. And Johnson is a huge target, 6'6", 270. He just dropped that one. I watched him work out the other day. And uh, Brandon Johnson, who they expected to play fullback and linebacker, the trainer was working both Johnson uh, and the tight end, Robert Johnson, out. And uh, I didn't think either one of them could play. Uh, uh, Brandon Johnson has a groin, but I don't know. Maybe we'll see him even tonight. That's Cassidius. Well, ball is scooted through his legs on the ground, and that's the smart thing to do right there. That's going to be a flag also. In college football, you don't have to touch him down. And Kennard Ellis, they would have a loss all the way back to the 17-yard line. And this is going to be a post-play foul, personal foul, first down to 15 yards. Wow. After the play, there was a dead ball, personal foul. Michael, exuberance by a youngster. Watch the ball go between his legs. Now, Daniel Cobb did the smart thing like you talked about. He just tries to recover it. But you don't even have to touch him. He's no. down. And folks, the difference in the penalty, it would have been back at the 17. It would have been second down and 27 yards to go. Right now, it's first down and 10, Auburn at the 32. A lot of mistakes by Florida here yep. in the first half. Yep, and the head ball coach is not real happy about it over there. Brown with the handoff right up the middle. Has five, has 10, and he's up to the races. They will tackle him at around the 46-yard line. With the big, quick opener. And they're going to spot him down officially at the 45. And Cassinius Moore has shown more and more why he's the starting tailback here at Auburn. Very powerful runner. Doesn't go down with the arm tackle. Lito Shepard almost ran through his tackle. So it's first and ten. About to go in their eight minutes. Left to play in his opening hand. Number two, Florida, struggling with the Auburn Tigers here on the plane. Pass over the middle, got him open, has it complete. That's 81 McIntyre. Brian Kennedy. Ron, Virginia Tech 5-0, barely tested here against Boston College. Same old thing, Grant Knoll looking for Andre Davis. Davis, six catches, 112 yards. This for a touchdown, 34 to nothing now in the third quarter, Ron. Situation here. Another first down. Back to back to back first downs. The first one by penalty, though, put an asterisk by that mistake. The Auburn Tigers are driving, and they give it to Moore again, and he gets hammered down hard right there in the middle of that line. The first one to hit him was Ian Scott. 
Adrian, in our phone conversation the other day with Steve Spurrier, talked to, to him and said, There's, this team is good as the national championship team. And Steve Spurrier said, it's not far enough along this season to say we're as good. And he said, if we don't get full of ourselves, and I think that's what he's going to talk to this team about at halftime, they have been playing like they're full of themselves. Second down and 10. They get the stop on first down. This is Williams. Connell Williams tackled by Alex Brown. And they're going to say that his knee touched at the 36. So it means it'll be a third down and five, needing to take the ball just inside, that, actually, the 32-yard line. Two draws in a row. And again, by Auburn, what Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, and Tommy Tuberville trying to do is really take advantage of the defensive lineman roaring up the field. You got to think Tim Carter here now. Third down, and as I said, about the 31 and a half yard line to get the first. Cobb sets deep in the pocket, no pressure on him, and a ball thrown behind the receiver. Flag is down, and that's thrown deep. That could be offensive holding. I'm not sure they had enough guys on the line of scrimmage again, Auburn. We're offside. Illegal formation. You're right, Mike. Offensive line did not have seven players. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. So they go for this one here. It's going to be out of, of about, well, he does either, so we'll have to see if there's a holder in the ball game with me. But I don't see a holder, so it is going to be a punt. As we mentioned, he kicked one from 64 yards with the wind in the warm-ups. But Coach Tupperville is not going to take a chance right here, and we assume Duvall will kick it away. Shepard is the deep man standing back at the 10-yard line for Florida. Big stop for the Gators. Yeah, kicked it way too far there. There's a lot of energy up above this stadium. It just took that ball and pushed it into the end zone. So we'll take a break. 6.20 left until halftime, and our score remains Auburn 10 and Florida 3. Three, our score. The answer to tonight's athletic trivia question since 1950 named the two sophomores to finish as high as second in the Heisman voting. Herschel Walker of Georgia, 81, and Marshall Falk of San Diego State in 1992. Two pretty good ones. Yep. You know what, Mike? I hate to see that kind of. I know Grossman is playing unbelievably well, but the kid doesn't need those kind of distractions. He is only he's, he's only a sophomore. He's got a distraction tonight. It's Auburn's defense. Yep. Short drop this time gets the pass out complete. That's Gaffney, who has been very quiet in this ball game. And Carlos Rogers makes the tackle on him. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. Because of the high ankle injury to Ernest Graham that you mentioned earlier, he got last week. Ron, in pregame warm-up, he could not go 100% on any single play. He carried the ball 13 times, not once did he run beyond five yards. They really miss him. Coaches won't put a percentage on how much they miss him in there, but they say, without him, we just don't have the confidence in our running game. Without him in there, we're not just one play away all the time. Yeah, I'll tell you, Adrian, and from the shots we're getting, he is really frustrated. Gillespie hit behind the line of scrimmage, tackled by Callier. Also, Thomas helping out on the stop. It's uh, That's got to be tough. When yeah. You know you can contribute and help your ball club, and uh, you just got to stand there. And an ankle sprain, boy, last week, John Humanick said after the ball game, he really didn't say anything to anybody about it. He didn't think it was serious down. They need to take it to the 30-yard line to get the first down. Pressure on Grossman. Dumps it on Gillespie. He'll have the first down as he takes it to about the 30 and one-half yard line. Sal making the tackle. Great pressure by Kelly. Yeah, that's what Robert Gillespie does best, though. He's a receiver out of the backfield. He had 16 catches coming into this game. And you talk, uh, Adrian was talking about Ernest Graham not playing. I would expect in the third quarter we'll see Ron Carthen, number 33, because he's 213 pounds. He may give you more of an inside game. There's a look at uh, Ren Carthen on the sideline, a sophomore out of Key West. 
play action. He gets it out here in the flat. That's Walker, the tight end. And he puts a head down and is going to take it forward for a first down at around the 44. Hood making the stop. By the way, let me take time to do this. I mentioned John Humanick, the longtime sports information director at Florida, who does such a fantastic job. All of us have to travel on the weekends a lot. And I know tonight, Leanne, his wife, is celebrating a birthday, and she's in Gainesville, and he's up here working. Anyway, happy birthday, Leanne. We hope you have had a great day. About to go under four minutes. Left until halftime. He fumbles the snap, picks it up, and just does about all he can do with it. Sal is right there on top of him. A lot of concentration mistakes. Uh, when you start dropping the snap, uh, that's, I'm sure, again, will be a part of the halftime talk. Zach? Zadeus. Zadeus, a very good center. Uh, looked like Rex Grossman maybe pulled out a little too soon. Hey, uh, Rex, normally, as I said, doesn't have his uniform very dirty. He has taken a pounding in the first half of this ball game tonight. Shifting around on defense. Blitz is on pass. Got it complete to Gaffney. And that will be enough for another Florida first down as they right now with the most consistent drive that they have had on the evening. You talk about a quarterback has to be able to throw with defenders in your face. Rex Grossman shows you for a sophomore how tough he is. That's Torber who hits him, Mike. Takes the hit in the face but still completed that pass for a big first down to Gaffney. Clock runs, 3.25, now 3.24 until halftime. The number two team in the nation trying to go in with at least a tie at halftime. Grossman goes up on top with the long ball. And it is just a little too far as the flag goes down. Gaffney working against Carlos Rogers. And let's see who they're going to call the pass interference on. Yeah, it's going to be on Carlos Rogers, I believe. Auburn's been able not to give him the big uh, the big pass play in this game. Pass interference on the defense. Penalties 15 yards, automatic first down. Run a lot of times you'll see Florida play with a tight end to the backside of two receivers. And the reason they do that is for protection. When people start to get to the quarterback, they'll keep the tight end in, take the two wide receivers and figure it's man coverage, try to get Jabbar Gaffney down the field against Carlos Rogers. So a pretty good call of protection because Auburn has been hitting Rex Grossman. First down, the new line of scrimmage is the Auburn 29-yard line. Gillespie, left side and hit at the line of scrimmage. Torber again. And the thing that they're doing, they're getting penetration, particularly off the corners, Mike. Well, they're doing a lot of line stunts. Uh, early, uh, the first quarter was a lot of X stunts with the defensive end and defensive tackle. In other words, the end would, the tackle would go outside, the end go inside, and that confuses the blocking schemes of the offensive line. John Lovett, the defensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers and also the outside linebackers coach. Very intent in this ball game, as you might imagine. Second down and seven. Grossman sets. He's under pressure again. Gets it off to Gillespie. Turns it up the middle, and he is going to be close to a first down, although his knee touched just shy of the 20-yard line. Spencer Johnson makes the tackle for the Auburn Tigers. And that was Moore, Alton Moore, who was applying that pressure on quarterback Rex Grossman. Ron, what happened on that last play? Auburn's answer to Florida when you keep your tight end to block. We're going to play three over your two, three defensive back, and they're going to do the same thing right now. Third yeah. down and about one yard for the first down. Grossman wants to throw on third and short, zings it, and got it complete, and that's Caldwell. And that silences the crowd as they are going into the end of the field where a heavy student section is. Thomas makes the tackle. It'll be first down. Brian Kinney. 
Ron, coming up, Sports Center in game at the half. Mariners in trouble. Cards, Diamondbacks going five. And football, of course, what happened to Florida State against Miami? The big surprises in the SEC. And the Mike Tyson fight is over in Denmark. That's coming up on the Saturn halftime report. Rodney Gilmore will join me then, Ron. First down and 10. A minute 20 seconds left until halftime. Grossman. for a moment with all the people on the sideline, but he caught it, but he came down out of bounds. That was Jabbar Mills who was coming after the quarterback and forcing the play. Just ran out of room on the outside. I'm sure Steve Spurrier would have liked to have seen him throw that away. I mean, he threw it into a crowd. Yep, as you can see, there were three people around Jacobs. Five-step drop, swings it out to Gillespie, turns it up, and that is a nice job by Rashad Walker. You talk about being prepared and ready for certain plays. The minute Gillespie flares out of that backfield, Mike, they are right there waiting for that play. Well, Walker did a nice thing because Gillespie tried to put a move on him, but he broke down in good football position to make that tackle, not let him get extra yardage. Well, this would be a big win on this play if Auburn can hold him right here for the defense. Third down. They need to take it down to the five-yard line to pick up the first down. Grossman sings this one way too tall at the five, looking for Taylor Jacobs. Good on the cover, and now a lot of whooping going on between the secondary of Auburn and the Florida wide receivers, and that's several times that it has happened. I'm, a, I'm surprised the officials are allowing that to go on. Yeah, that ball took off again on Rex Grossman. He's having trouble throwing with this wind. Ball is going to be placed down at the 22-yard line, so it's a 32-yard attempt. His first one tonight, he made one from 45. Plenty of foot into this one, and he's got it. So with 21 seconds left until halftime, we'll take a break. It's Auburn 10, and now the Florida Gators 6. Getting better. 10-6, Auburn leading by four points with 21 ticks on the clock. Mike, would you squib this one here? Yeah, I'd squib, but I wouldn't kick it to Carter. I'd kick it the other side. Carnell Williams, also one of the uh, the deep men, and actually the Auburn return people are up shallower than normal. They are around the 10-yard line. I'd never kick it to Carter. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I don't think LSU will ever do it Seen again. enough games where he yeah. just uh, changes the field. Uh, that return he had last year. They're going to have to get a hold of on this football here. He's calling for one of the outside people. And yeah, it'll be a safety. Usually the safety comes in to hold the uh, football because he's a guy going to go down slow anyway. Bailey. Corey Bailey. He'll be a safety on one side. The kicker will be a safety on the other side. with the kick and this is going to be retrieved by Brown at the five yard line Williams a big part Carnell Williams and he'll take it out of the 23 to the 24 yard line and we have 14 ticks on the clock now, tomorrow on ESPN, it's Sunday night NFL. Rich Gannon and the Oakland Raiders traveling to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Peyton Manning leads the National Football League's number one scoring offense in this battle of AFC heavyweights. Coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, right after NFL primetime. One running play, and I'd go into the halftime feeling real good. That's exactly what they do is they go straight ahead with uh, Cassinius Moore. Tackled by Mateel, and take a look at this crowd as Auburn heads to the South Tunnel.
And let's go down to the sideline, Adrian Karsten. Coach, is the wind affecting your passing game or it just seemed like your offense was the same? We had some early chances here in the first quarter and we messed them up big time. And Auburn, or they, they hauled the ball on us. We game we, we knew we'd have one like this and we got one tonight is there a chance your team came in overconfident here no no we got no excuses we're ready to play Ron? okay so steve spurrier who always uh, cuts to the chase and says it like it is i'd love to hear that discussion at halftime 10-6 auburn leads ryan kenny let's toss it back to you guards rushing which means that opens your passing game when you don't have any running game or scrams on the sideline then everybody plays pass so uh you got to take your hat off to Auburn though they played great with great effort this first half yep they really did and I really would love to have been a mouse in the corner listening to the conversation that Steve Spurrier had with his ball club Auburn came back out on the field and Florida was still in the locker room and they came out with illegal barriers but they came out pretty doggone late and I imagine that that conversation was very stern very stiff at halftime well, I like what Steve Spurrier told uh, Adrian he said I'm, we don't have no excuses we came ready to play and uh, Auburn credit Auburn this kick is going to go out of the back of the end zone time now for our code red the first half stats yeah, and the biggest thing, Ron, is the minus 12 rushing yards. Uh, Auburn can't run the ball either, but their defense playing very well. Uh, factor in Tim Carter's big kickoff return and the mistake, the turnover by by Florida. So uh, I expect in this first five minutes we're going to find out a lot about Florida. Keep in mind, they are moving into the teeth of this very stiff win here in the third quarter. But the quarterback seemed to have thrown better into the win than with it. Hard to judge exactly how much touch to put on the ball. Grossman sets deep, zings this one complete to Caldwell. Tackled immediately, but he has about 14 yards on the play. Adrian Karsten, what do you got for us? All right, Ron, whereas Steve Spurrier claims the wind has not really made uh, any effect on his offense, Tommy Tuberville says it's going to have a lot to do with the outcome of this ball game. He says we cannot afford to give Florida the ball and the wind to start the second half. So he says, all right, we'll take the wind at our backs in the third quarter, but then we have to make our hay. To the defense on the field right now, he said, remind you one thing Florida is always just one play away well that's the truth they have the home run potential with the, all the talent that they possess Grossman zips this one complete and right now Rashad Caldwell is the man who's lighting up the secondary yeah, they, they look a different football team Rex Grossman coming out and hit two curl routes Rashad Caldwell uh, again Auburn's not giving them anything long the longest play pass play they had in the first half was 32 yards the longest run was three yards so Auburn's doing what they wanted to do make them work the field now Rex Grossman's got to be patient and just take those little curl routes and work down the field and, and cash in the numbers on Grossman 171 yards pitches it back to Gillespie and he is down quickly by Saul Sal has uh, done a very good job tonight. He's not the starter. He plays behind Thomas. Thomas is occupying the middle tonight. And by the way, we haven't called Thomas's name very many times in this ballgame, Mike. No, and Ron, the answer to when we talked about Auburn in the first half, bringing the end down inside and the tackle outside, well, the answer to that is running a toss play, but Auburn really reacted well to that play. Second down, nine. Grossman got it complete. That's Jacobs. Taylor Jacobs, the junior out of Monticello. And again, Steve Spurrier right now calling plays very patiently. He knows Auburn's not going to give him a big throw down the field. You remember in the first quarter when the, uh, the interception, uh, when Rex Grossman tried to throw the ball down the corner, had some open receivers underneath, but tried to go for everything. Auburn picked it off. Now patience is a virtue. with a draw play. Gillespie bounces it inside the 35-yard line down to the 34. DeMarco McNeil and Hood combining for the tackle for the Auburn Tigers. DeMarco McNeil out of Blunt High School in Mobile has five total sacks this season. We talked about he's playing hurt. They need him healthy. He's an excellent defensive lineman. Mikey's got a double injury. He has a knee that was twisted, plus the fact he has a leg inflection, uh, infection where he got cut 
So he's really having fun. And problems. you wouldn't know it right now the way he's working <laughs> out there against the Florida offensive line. Second down and five. They set a middle screen for a too low to Gillespie. Moore and Torber applying the pressure, and he did the smart thing. He just threw it into the ground. Brian Kenny. Ron, Kentucky is 0-3 in the SEC. Here trailing LSU 22-17, but Jared Lorenzen is back and throwing the football. Derek Abney has that. He's around the corner. In for the score. They went for two. They got it. 25-22, Kentucky in the fourth quarter. with a really big surprise in the Southeastern Conference. Third down, and the crowd trying to help out the defense. Borderline. Pressure off the corner. Thrown in the middle, it's intercepted. Philip Payne. He's on the move right now. I think Rex Grossman thought he was going to sit right down for the first down. And he threw it to a spot. And Robert Gillespie moved to the right side. Did he intercept that mic or was it on the ground? Doesn't matter. I mean, it, well, it does matter. <laughs> uh, the officials say that he did intercept it. That's right. It was third down. It was not close. So it does matter whether he did or not. Head of steam, Ronnie Brown. The city is more of Eddie Parton, 22 rather than 23. Let's look at that just one more time. Is this an interception or not as he comes diving for it? Uh, well, his hands are under it. Close. Are you saying yes or no? Close. That's a hitch. <laughs> Second down, very short. The transfer from the Georgia Bulldogs has been the spark plug tonight. Moore again tries to bounce it to the outside, and that is good, quick pursuit by a very quick Florida defense. Kennard Ellis is the one who wrapped him up and knocks him down, and now it becomes a third down situation, and Auburn needs about four yards for the first. And that last play, Daniel Cobb looked for Manuel, the safety, number four, and he saw him cheat up on the left side. So he went to get away from him. You watch him move up. So Daniel Cobb says, let's run away from him. To no avail. Third down. Cardinal Williams in the ball game at tailback for Auburn. Here comes the pressure. Flag is down. Pass. Got it complete to Carter. And Carter shoved out of bounds across the way by Lido Shepard. But now let's check the marker. I believe it's going to go against Auburn. Travis Carroll with uh, a lot of pressure on the play. Illegal shift. It's the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Third down. Big mistake because Tim Carter again on the little hairpin route where he works inside and outside was open and uh, they had the first down. Steve Spurrier talked about it the first half. Auburn has kept the football away from his offense. Third down, they need to take it out to the 39-yard line. Carter at the top of your screen. That's who the pass is for. Not turning around quickly enough. Lido Shepard with the cover. But I'll tell you, that's a good one-on-one -on -one situation with Carter going up against Lido Shepard. That's two guys that will be playing in the NFL. Tim Carter with great track speed against Lido Shepard. I think Lido Shepard got away with holding. I don't think he did. He did. Lido Shepard is the deep man at the 30. The ball's kick, and this is a poor kick, not even a spiral. It's a knuckleball, but it's not going to be returnable as it bounds at around the 32-yard line. 41 yards on the kick. 10-6 Auburn leads. We'll be right back.
Back here in Auburn, coming into a game that's so important when you're playing the number two team in the nation, special teams become so important. To that end, Damon Duvall could have been one of the more important players in this game. He is frustrated, Ron, because the wind here on the surface is so strong, he has trouble from the drop to the foot when he punts the ball. Well, he has been most under ball like tonight. Pass is caught. Rache Caldwell, and that pass was thrown right by the defender who had good coverage, Mike, and it's still complete. Yeah, Stanford Simmons had a shot at it. The ball hung up a little bit because of the wind, but uh, Rex Grossman had it low enough where the catch was able to make, be made. Counter tray and hit in the backfield is Gillespie. And again, they get penetration. And Mayo Sal, the linebacker who is playing tonight, a redshirt freshman out of Birmingham, uh, has been extremely impressive. Ron, what happens on this play? Oh, the two pulling linemen don't see him. As they pull out, you watch them pull out over here. They don't get to the defensive end. Mayo Sal. Don't see him. So it's a second down and ten. Auburn drawing a lot of folks very close to the line of scrimmage. Grossman out of the backfield. Gets it to Gillespie. And as soon as Gillespie makes the catch again, Rashad Walker is shadowing his every step. You have to take away the running back because usually Steve Sparrow will put Gillespie on a linebacker. Tommy Tuberville tonight saying Rashad Walker is going to be responsible for Robert Gillespie out of the backfield. Good look at Ernest Graham on the sideline, unable to play because of an ankle he sprained last week at the LSU game. Here's the situation. Third down Florida. They need to take it to the Auburn 43. Blitz, pressure off the corner. Rache Caldwell, and how cool is that by a quarterback? It's got people just flying all around it. Walker hit the quarterback. He's the one who was coming on the blitz, Mike. Rob Roberts now the fullback. And Robert Gillespie picked up the blitz. You start with that. Watch the fullback, number 44. He picks up the blitz. Gillespie picks up the blitz. Now Rex Grossman slides over to the right, throws being hit. And I think the defensive backs gave up they, on the they play. Did, they did. They thought that there was going to be a sack. sack. That's a great point. Now here comes the flag. For the snap, dead ball foul, violation of the substitution rule. On the offense, penalty is five yards, it's first down. There's a timeout, charge to the offense. Timeout, charge to the Florida Gators because of uh, breaking the huddle with 12 players. We'll come back and talk more about it. 8.29 left in the third quarter. is complete to Caldwell, and he is going to take it enough for the first down to the 20-yard line. Ron, the whole Florida passing game is high-low. They got the deep receiver, and they always got the back entertaining the linebacker. Here's your, you're going to see the linebackers take the back out of the backfield. They'll stay with him, but that opens up the middle for the throw to Rache Caldwell. First down, Florida. New line of scrimmage, the Auburn 20. We are under eight minutes to play third quarter. Linebackers stay at home. They show blitz. Grossman, near sideline. Got it. Touchdown, Caldwell. Simmons. Yeah, you talk about the great teams. Now, we're not sure about 
Florida, but we all think they're a great football team. Steve Spur got their attention at halftime. I'm not sure he yelled at them or anything. He just said, you know, Auburn's playing a good good game defensively. We need to be patient. Rex Grossman was patient on that drive. Chandler with the extra point attempt, and he knocks it home. So there's a timeout on the field. 7.48 remaining, a third quarter, and our new score, the Florida Gators, 13, and the Auburn Tigers, 10, as Rache Caldwell puts them on the scoreboard. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by the American Plastics Council. Plastics make it possible. Ron, good protection for Rex Grossman on the last play. See his offensive line pick up everything. Fullback Roberts sitting there, corner route. Rache Caldwell beats Stanford Simmons. And he beat him handily. As you see how Grossman, how efficient he can be. Six plays, 72 yards, two minutes and 32 seconds in a total offense now. 253 for Florida. Auburn still does not have 100 yards in this ball game. The long kick return helped him on one score. And then the turnover. and they say don't return it. So it'll come out to the 20 yard line. Tonight over on ESPN2, number 10 Fresno State takes on Colorado State at 10 Eastern. 5-0 Bulldogs looking to run the table with the hopes of crashing the BCS party at the end of the year. And the Rams appear to be the last big hurdle left on their schedule. Michael? Yeah, when you look at this schedule, now Rice won today. Uh, SMU's been down a little bit. Nevada got beat by Louisiana Tech. So really, this is the game. Boise State now, pretty good football team, so I wouldn't rule them out. But this is the game for Fresno State. Daniel Cobb continues to operate at quarterback, and he keeps it. Put it in the stomach of the running back, and he's off. Cobb will take it all the way out to the 40-yard line as Mike Mateel made the tackle. And a no-no on the defensive end or didn't stay at home. Sometimes you think, well, Jason Campbell's in there, will stay at home, but Daniel Cobb's not going to run, and uh, he fooled him. Fakes the ball to the tailback, and everybody, Alex Brown, just took off for the fullback, and uh, here's Daniel Cobb showing pretty good running ability. So first down for the Auburn Tigers as they own the ball at their own 40-yard line. Here comes the blitz and a bad snap, and he will just fall on this one, and, and Florida learned their lesson well. No 15-yard penalty this time as Alex Brown was all over him. Tap football there. In the center, and that's the second time tonight that there has been an errant snap in that shotgun formation. And what you want to do here's the, here's the snap uh, off to the left and low, and watch Alex Brown. He's going to play tap football. Just touch him. But now you're Florida, and you want to see how Auburn plays behind, and you want to put a little more pressure on them. See if they open up the football game a little bit. Second down and 26. Same play happened in the first half, but Florida got a 15-yard personal foul penalty, and Auburn went on to get points. Pass complete, incomplete. Good heavens, Lorenzo Diamond just got rocked, and it was Daryl Dixon, a junior out of Oak Hill by way of New Smyrna Beach, and he really put the wood on it. I can guarantee you tomorrow or Monday when they look at the tape, they'll run this play back about 30 times and say, this is the way to hit a tight end coming across. Make him pay. Daryl Dixon dislodging the football and Lorenzo Diamond. A lot of teams will take highlight plays like that all during the season and show them the night before the game. Carnell Williams comes in to tailback, number 24. Third and 26. Fake the screen to the right, throws it to the left, flag is down, and this is Carnell Williams. Mike Patil with the tackle for the Gators, and you can see that Florida signaling they think it is a holding call. Oh, 
they are a long way from picking up the first down. Would you send them back, Mike, and run no, it again? I, or? Well, the way they're playing on offense right now, I, I believe I would take the penalty. I'd force them back a little further rather than punt here. They got the wind at their back. I'd take them back. the wind and Bill Goss's mic. Uh, Brian Kenny, let's check with you. Ron, Kentucky leading LSU 25-22. You see 16 seconds left. Rohan Davey in the air to the freshman Michael Clayton. Touchdown. Extra point is good. 29-25. 13 seconds to go. Rohan Davey is a winner. You, you like that Clayton, the young receiver. Yeah, Clayton is, uh, is awfully good. Deep pass tip. Intended receiver McIntyre, and it was Gus Scott who got a hand on it. Ron, I really like Steve Spear taking that penalty. A lot of coaches would have turned that down because it was fourth down anyway, but that moves them back further. The punts have been an adventure. I'll make a point to you. Just what Adrian talked about on his sideline report a moment ago. Auburn's been having trouble kicking even with the win because the win is so strong on the drop. Spurrier knew that, and, and as you said, smart move. Scott Johnson, our director, said Sean Lundell. Up for the Giants missed the ball one time in the wind. Whipped it, yeah. Hanging wobbly spark from the 38-yard line to hit immediately at the 40 is Lito Shepard. And is finally going to be down at the 42. So that's a 42-yard kick. And Carlos Rogers on the special teams making the tackle. Well, tomorrow on ESPN, it's Sunday night NFL. Rich Gannon and the Oakland Raiders traveling to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Coverage begins 8.30 Eastern time, right after NFL primetime. You remember what Adrian Carson said, Tommy Tuberville said? He said the third quarter is going to be important because we got the wind in our back. Well, they've given up seven here, so they've lost a seven. Plus, they're going to 5.39. They're going to lose the win. Former Raider. The man they call Bo here that ran on the plains back in the early 80s, Bo Jackson. Dumps it over the middle. And that's Rob Roberts, the big fullback, 6'2", 256, out of Dade City, tackled by Sal. Seven tackles unofficially we have him for. Have to congratulate Troy State today. Going to Division I, which I think is going to help that school immensely with their enrollment, fundraising. They knock off Mississippi State today. So congratulations to, uh, to Troy State, Larry Blakeney, the coach. Gillespie get right at the line of scrimmage, and it's James Callier, the senior out of Miami, who will make the tackle, and there's no gain for the Florida Gators. You get the feeling that all of a sudden now, the tempo in this ball game is coming closer to where this man wants it. Yeah, he didn't panic at halftime when he was going off and Adrian was asking him those questions. He said, no, they've, they've been better than us and uh, you know, we're playing, we're playing a tough opponent. So he wasn't panicking at all. Second and 10. Flag is down. Grossman has it complete close to the first down marker to Caldwell. But from where that was thrown, that could be offensive pullback. Holding on the offense. Second down. And every coach knows there's some games that you're going to sleepwalk through, and uh, some games you're going to make a lot of mistakes, and uh, we're going to. You're going to get some penalties. You're going to have some turnovers, but you've got to be good enough to overcome those. Mike, didn't you find it when you were coaching it literally only two or three times a year, if then, that your team really hit that op optimum performance? That's, that's right, but, but the good teams will find a way to win, and so far in, in hostile environments like this tonight. Rand Carthen, number 33, comes in a tailback. Timeout taken by Florida. So we'll take it with them. 357 remaining third quarter. Florida on top by three.
Brian Kenny here with a Sports Center in-game update. It's a final now. LSU over Kentucky. Rohan Davey in the final seconds with a touchdown toss. And Texas Tech, look at this, leads K-State 17 to 7. K-State could be 0-3 in the Big 12. Well, the amazing thing about that, uh, Brian, is you have to say maybe Snyder and the guys put all their eggs in one basket, and that was to beat Oklahoma, and uh, they just have not gotten over it. Rodney Gilmore talked Thursday night. He said the offensive line for Kansas State was really beat up. Roberson probably wasn't That's going right. to play. That's right. Roberson was not going to be able to play or was real iffy. You're right. You know, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Play started off, no whistles. All of a sudden, then there was a flag. Dead ball foul. Snap infraction on the offense. Five-yard penalty. So, Florida now scrimmaging from their own 39-yard line. They've got to take this ball all the way to the Auburn 37-yard line. Carthon in motion. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage. Mike, am I seeing things, or do they have an uncovered receiver out there on the far side? No, they had. What they did have is Rache Caldwell down the middle, and he looked like he was open. Marcus White is the man who tipped the pass at the line of scrimmage. Now third down and 25. Third down, they're going to punt, Ron, and this is a good move because Auburn has nobody back. And Auburn's got the regular defense on the field. Bad snap. He doesn't have to kick it, just go down. He lost the foul. Now it's been rattled over to another Florida player. Point of the matter is it's third down, just fall on it. That's all he had to do, and he panicked. Now they can punt it. Wise move to punt on third down. Daryl Dixon just fall on it right there. Auburn's gets their uh, special teams in. They get to return people on the field. Nobody's back right now. That play. And Auburn's going to have to call time out there. All. They have no deep back back. He was trying to get out there. I can promise you that uh, Coach Spurrier, he's got that visor off and he is hot. And I have a feeling that one of the discussions will be there will be no more ad-libbing like those laterals that we no. saw in that play. I, I think what happened, though, is the players forgot it was third down. Yeah. And Steve Spurrier figuring it was third down. I guess, I guess they knew it was third down, so deciding to punt. Well, that's one of those situations where, again, I mean, you're right. The normal reaction of the players is, hey, panic because we just fumbled the ball and we're going to lose it back here. All he had to do was just drop down on that football. Then it's fourth down, no harm. But they came about this close to putting Auburn right back in this football and, game. And it really wasn't a punt block. Uh, Auburn was surprised on yeah. third down that they were punting. So they were sitting back in a regular defense. The snap was bad. So... Uh, you know somebody Maybe that the used wind to, the snap. I'll tell you somebody that used to do that on a regular basis in this conference was Johnny Boyle. When he thought it was a troubled situation, he would line up and punt on third. Well, he won a lot of games, so uh, can't argue with his theories. So Matt Leach will get another opportunity. Roderick Hood is the deep man for Auburn. I'll tell you, these punters have had uh, more than they could say grace over tonight with uh, Gathering in these uh, snaps with all the wind swirling down there. It really has been an adventure in the kicking game tonight. It, it really has been. Adrian's point is extremely well taken. Tim Carter, who's the end man, has blocked the punt. Good pass this time. Pressure. Carter almost got there. Short kick, but good coverage by Florida, and Auburn has to run away from it.
Well, it's time now for the Miller High Life storyline. Rex Grossman, 22 of 33, 270 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. Florida, minus six rushing. Daniel Cobb, 4 of 12, 54 yards. Total yardage, Florida, 264, Auburn, 89. Yeah, but the big thing is, Ron, Florida can't run the football. And Auburn now can play the passing game because they know they can't run the football. Flag is down. Free play overthrown, and it was the defensive front of the Florida Gators that jumped into the neutral zone before the ball was snapped. Defense was offside at the snap. Brian Kenny, what do you have for us? We have the defending national champions now have it in hand against Kansas, Jason White. Latest total, 17 for 26 in the air for the fourth time tonight. Hits Trent Smith for a touchdown. That's all four touchdowns, 31-3 over Kansas. Jason White's getting hot for Oklahoma. First down at five following that penalty. Sidious Ward off the right side, and he's going to be very close to the first down. They're going to spot him at around the 47 and a half. And uh, another flag. It looks like Andre Davis is signaling he's going to be holding against Auburn. Well, we have not played many plays here in the second half that we haven't had laundry on the field. I like the band here at Auburn. They played Dragnet uh, when, when most holding calls. On the offense. Penalty is 10 yards. From the spot of the foul, still first down. Jack Webb. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Jason Campbell is pulled run because he wasn't showing head coach uh, Tommy Tuberville any authority in the passing game. Into the win, he wasn't stepping up into the win and delivering the ball. So in comes Daniel Cobb. He told me as he came out at halftime, Daniel's my number one right now. He's getting better as the game goes on. More of my players have confidence because of the confidence he is showing me. Boy, that, that has so much to do with every situation. Play action there, and he's going to throw the ball. Batted at the line of scrimmage. Florida going after that one, trying to come up with the interception. That You could see Alex Brown in hot pursuit of it, and he tipped it. Alex Brown had a great game against Tennessee a couple years ago, and 6'4", uh, 234. Rushes here, sees the play. Yep, you see number 13 batting that one up. remaining third quarter Florida the number two team in the nation holding on to a three-point margin Daniel Cobb pressure is on this time and it passes too far and now they're going to have a very big third down situation John Hope the Florida defensive coordinator said the one thing the defense can improve on is turnovers uh, they haven't forced many turnovers this year on that side of the ball and he would like to see more well he's got a great opportunity here third 13 for an interception uh, for this Florida defense. Mike, the one thing also that Florida has not had the luxury of tonight, normally their offense scores so many points early, the opposition becomes one-dimensional. And, and, and Florida has become one-dimensional. <laughs> You're right. Third down and 13. The line to make is the 46-yard line of Florida. Hit as the ball is thrown. Good pressure by Mike Mateel, and he interrupted everything. It's fourth down, and Auburn is going to have to punt the football away. The good pressure by Auburn's defensive front and backers getting their hands up, making sure they close every lane. Daniel Cobb's trying to throw the football. Boy, Cassinius Moore was trying to block him, but uh, didn't do a very good job of it as Natil was coming after him quickly. David Duvall waits for the snap back at the 26. Good driving kick. Wow going to hit at the three and will go into the end zone. 60 yards on that punt. So, 
Mike, as we look at the stats heading toward the end of the third quarter here, because now minus 24 yards rushing for Florida, and of course, sacks are taken off that as well, but still, total yards is 270. Actually, it's down to 246 because of that minus 24, and Auburn still does not have 100 yards in this ball game. you got to credit Florida, you know, trying to find a way, but you got to credit Auburn's defense not allowing Florida to run the football. Counter trade. Not much there. Gillespie again is tripped up. Jabbar Mills making the tackle. Yeah, a lot of line movement by uh, Auburn. I'm sure what future opponents of Florida are going to look at, the line stunts and the bother to, uh, the Gators tonight. Crowd trying to get this defense one more time. Under two minutes to play, third quarter. Can Auburn pull the upset? They're within three points. Grossman tried to throw it away and very nearly intercepted by uh, by Young. And the other thing that I, I've seen tonight is Auburn not allowing the big play. Now they hit the touchdown pass to Caldwell or Gaffney. Uh, 32 yards was the biggest, longest pass in the first half. I signaled you wrong. It, it yeah. was it was Caldwell. You were right. But I was pointing to Gaffney for one reason. They really, for the most part, have taken him out of this world of the world offense Of the big plays. And now they've caught some curls in front of the deep backs, but uh, nothing big. Third down. They need the 30. Going to the man we were talking about, Gaffney, and Gaffney was open. Hallier with pressure. Ron, except for the drive they scored on, they, they have been uh, very poor on third down. Auburn 0 for 10 on third down conversions. 3 of 11 for the Florida Gators tonight. And again, Matt Leach has to do his job to Hood. Low pass, and it goes between his legs. He has hit. The ball is loose. First and goal, Auburn. Every coach talks to their punter about when this happens, scoop it up and scoop it into the end zone. Do not give them the ball on the three-yard line, but give them a safety. Rob Roberts, who is the fullback, is the snapper. So the Auburn Tigers fourth down in that play, and they take it over, and it is first down and goal, three yards away. Straight ahead on the running play, he'll get to the one-yard line, Cassinius Moore. Remember when they were down here before in the first half, they followed Kendall Simmons up and over, and uh, I felt like they'd come back to that. They ran the quarterback sneak, and Daniel Cobb got in. You see if they go behind Simmons. Matt Leach in the far sideline, just disbelieving of the way things have gone tonight. But Mike said the kicking game has been an adventure because the wind hindering the snappers. Well, Simmons on this left side. That's where they go. The running play penetration. He's going to be knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe loss of a half yard. Manual. Manual. Yes, yeah, the safeties are getting involved in goal line defense, which they got to be involved in. Third down and goal. They're going to let this clock run down, Ron. Talk about this play and do it in the fourth quarter. Ten seconds, nine and eight. Four fingers go in the air for the Gators. We have got a good one brewing here on the plane. That is the end of the third quarter. We'll come back with more as the Auburn Tigers with a third and goal at the two-yard line. Florida leads it 13 to 10.
during the timeout, starting fullback and long snapper Rob Roberts practicing on the sideline. So Florida tonight has had a difficult time on special teams. But that one, let's see if it cost him. Auburn started with a first and goal at the three. Right now it's a third down and goal, and the ball is resting at the two-yard line. Do you throw, Mike, or do you run? I think it's a play-action pass here, Ron. They got a tight end. They got 69, and there's a tight end, which leads you to believe it's going to be a run then. Daniel Cobb spins, hands it off. It is a running play. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Auburn. Butler. The sophomore out of Hoover, Alabama, takes it in. And the Auburn Tigers are back on top. Ron, they brought a tight a, a tackle. Number 69, Mark Peru, in to play tight end. So that's a giveaway. It's going to be a run to his side. Yep, Mike Perra was out there on the left side. And they went the opposite way, didn't they? Extra point attempt by Duvall. Kicks it up, and it's good. Don't go away. 14 minutes, 55 seconds left in our ball game, and the new score: Auburn 17, Florida 13. We'll be right back. Seventeen, thirteen. Mike, take us through the touchdown. Yeah, Mark Perrin, number 69, comes in the ball game. Now he's lined up as a tight end. Now those are three linemen right there. So you know it's not going to be a pass. He blocks down. They get a good block from Michael Owens, close to a hold. And Chris Butler gets in the end zone. Now watch number 21's block here. It's not a hold. It's, it's a tackle, Mike. <laughs> it's a takedown. And Lito Shepard and uh, Chris I'm, Butler gets in the end zone. I'm amazed they didn't throw a flag on that. Sometimes coaches up here see a substitution like that and call down right away. The 69's in the ball game as a tight end. Low line drive kick taken at the five-yard line by Ratliff. on the special teams. Dansby, who is uh, one of the starters at linebacker, comes in to make the tackle. Well, coming up after the game, Sports Center, Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen. Dynasty done. Not in the cards. Of course, we're talking about the Diamondbacks and uh, the Cardinals. And Michael Jordan in Miami. And for extended post-game coverage from here at Auburn, turn over to ESPN News immediately following this game. The Auburn Tigers, as we play early in the fourth quarter, back on top of number two floor. Ball is tipped, and it's intercepted. That's Sauer. series of the year for Florida's defense because they're on the ropes right here. They need to hold Auburn to a field goal try here. Mike Alton Moore, give him credit. He is the one who tipped the ball and Sowell comes up with the turnover. Moore, hit in the backfield, breaks one tackle, breaks two, gets by a third, and he's down to the 18-yard line. Todd Johnson making the tackle. Rex Grossman trying to hit the fullback over the middle. Rob Roberts, ball gets tipped by Alton Moore and uh, picked off by Sal. But uh, I can't tell you, this defense right here is, they're being challenged the whole season right here. 
Safety comes up tight. Here's Moore. Knights to a hold on the right side. Six yards, maybe seven, as Mike Matteo will make the tackle. Very close to the first down, but about a yard short. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. The reason that ball was intercepted, Ron, is a, an adjustment that Grossman has tried to make ever since the first quarter. Remember I told you he was putting too much air underneath the ball. The wind was carrying it too far as they were going toward the other end of the field. Now he's throwing more of a direct ball. Lower. It gets batted and intercepted. Butler into the lineup at tailback. He's the young man who scored the touchdown just a few moments ago. Radliff in motion. Butler gets the ball hit behind the line of scrimmage and being driven back to the 20. And they'll see forward progress. He will lose to the 17. Manuel is the man who hit him first. That's the play you may go back to in this series or this season for what Florida accomplished here. Now Tommy Tuberville, you almost got to take the field goal here to go up seven. Keep one thing in mind, as close as they are, this is going to be about a 33-yard attempt. You think that that is almost a gimme. Folks, with the wind the way it's blowing here at the stadium tonight, nothing is a gimme in the kicking game. We've seen a little bit of everything. Damon Duvall from that far hash mark. Good pass. Look at that ball hooking, and it hooks right through. 12 minutes, 27 seconds left in the ball game, and Auburn, with an interception, puts three more on the board. It is now Tigers 20, and the Florida Gators 13. Stadium, Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, to Adrian Carson, coming to you in front of a sold-out house capacity, 86,063, and everybody has gotten their money's worth tonight. Coach Spurrier talking with Gaffney on the left, Grossman there in the middle, talking about what they need to do to get things going. They are now down by six points. This kick is going to kick out of the back of the end zone. Let me redo my math. Seven-point advantage, 20 to 13. Ryan, when you look at the SEC now, in the West, it's wide open, but Auburn sitting in the best seat. Ole Miss with a big win over Alabama today. Congratulations to David Cutcliffe. Really big win for him. Not only ended the drought against Alabama, he's an Alabama grad. Arkansas with a big win today over South Carolina. So uh, I think everybody's still alive in the West. It's been a crazy year on that side of the division. So the Gators down by a touchdown with 12 minutes and 22 seconds. Showing on the clock. Grossman stepping up. Drills this one long. Got a man wide open, and that's Gaffney. And he will take it the distance. In one play, and just like that, the Florida Gators are back in this ball game. What made that play run? Rex Grossman sliding to the left. He bought some time, and the play was away from the defensive corner on the left side. And I think they just lost sight of Gaffney. long to celebrate against the Gators. Well, we talked about off the top of the telecast, Mike, that time of possession means nothing uh, against Florida. Go back to that stop by their defense. That was a big stop. Chandler with the extra point. He knocks it home. And with 12.09 showing on the clock, it, it is Auburn 20 and Florida 20. Mike, take us through the replays. Yeah, Rex Grossman is going to slide to the left. Again, good pressure. You see he's trying to throw to the left. Now he's looking off, looking off. Now he looks back to the back side. And I believe they just gave up Roderick Hood on Gaffney. They felt, felt like Grossman was going to throw to the left side. And that's what we were talking about earlier. They hadn't allowed the big play. So Gaffney, we talked about just a moment ago, had been silenced. Not now. Brian Kitty, give us a check on Fresno State. Yes, indeed. Fresno State. Bulldogs back off a of bye week taking on Colorado State here. David Carr to Steven Spock. 
That put him up on top, but Colorado State has just answered seconds ago. It's 7-7 in the first quarter. K-State trying to get back in it. 24-13, Texas Tech still has the lead, still only in the third quarter, Ron. Well, down here in Auburn, Alabama, the mood has changed across the way on that Florida bench because they finally got just what Mike talked about up the top of this telecast. They finally got the big play, which they are so good at. And a crowd here in Auburn, which was really having a great time with the celebration just 10 seconds earlier, 80 yards down the field, and Gaffney uh, just put a stake in their heart. Ron, when you look at Gaffney running that route, and Steve Spurrier talked about it the other day to us, he said they're good route runners. They're, they're getting better. And he ran a stop and go on, on Roderick Hood and the safety Stanford Simmons, and they bit on it. And uh, Rex Grossman looking to the other side. Everything worked on that play for Gaffney's move. You know, an interesting comment uh, that Coach Spurrier made about his young quarterback as well, and he compared him to Danny Werfel. He said, in many instances, he is just like Werfel because sometimes he throws better in the game than he does in practice. Well, with the win, that was right on. This kick to the seven-yard line, and it's Carter. Tries to bring it wide. And it's just going to step out of bounds short of the 20-yard line. Ron, we're going to go back and look at this play and on to draw the route up. That's Gaffney. He's going to come down, stop, and then take off. And you'll see the defensive backs bite on this fake. Now they're looking into the football. Now as he comes out, he stutter steps, stops. Now they sit and, and eye up the quarterback there. And now he comes out of his break and runs right by him. Excellent pattern by Gapti. Gesenius Moore is the tailback. Florida shows blitz and they come with it right up the middle. That's Carroll pumping, being a hit, gets it away and got it to his tight end. That's Diamond at the 42-yard line or make it the 38 and is going to be tackled there. A lot of delays tonight. Uh, Carter, they hit Carter in the first play of the game on a delay. Hit Lorenzo Diamond. What happens, Ron? A lot of times, tight end will block. A back will blow by and get the linebacker's attention. Then the tight end will release. He's wide open. This has been a great football game. It really has. A lot of emotion. Auburn's given everything they got. About to go under 11 minutes in this one. Moore hit at the line of scrimmage and uh, takes it for extra yardage as he breaks that tackle. That's going to be a gain of very close to six yards in the play. Alex Brown on the stop. I don't believe Auburn has a turnover. As, as I've watched them tonight, they've played near perfect protecting the football. Three wide receiver set, and again, they continue to operate from the shotgun. Daniel Cobb, transfer from the University of Georgia. Retreats, lost this one. Big round, far side line, got it to his running back more. Got linebacker coverage on Travis Carroll, and that was a perfectly thrown ball. Ron, anytime you have the ball in the hash, a lot of times you can get your running back on the linebacker, Travis Carroll. He's going to come out of the backfield and go down the sideline on the inbounds. I drew him out of bounds. Now he's going against Travis Carroll, 55. Travis Carroll does everything humanly possible to get him from not catching that football. Good concentration. So Auburn sets up shot for the first down at the Florida 26-yard line. Puts it in the stomach of Williams, and he will go for very short yardage. LeFevre and also Scott combining on the tackle. That Eddie Murphy movie, I don't remember whether it was 48 hours or 24 hours or whatever, but he had a line in his, he said there's a new sheriff in town. There's a new sheriff at quarterback here for Auburn, Daniel Cobb. This guy has played since he's come in the football game. He hasn't made any mistakes. You know, plus the fact, Mike, you made the point, and I think it's a good one. He brought a calming influence on the offense. Pressure this time, ball 
is juggled and finally caught by Willis. Hey, what Willis almost had that ball taken away from him is Alexander was there in a hurry trying to take the ball out of his hands after he juggled it. He made three catches in one. He just he couldn't bring it in. He'll only get credit for one. Situation, third down. They need to take it to the 16-yard line to pick up the first down. Another very large play in this football game and a team that has had so many large plays. Earlier, the Florida defense stepped up and stopped Auburn, forcing them to kick a field goal. Can they do it again? Here comes the pressure. Pass is caught. First and goal, Auburn. Carnell Williams out of the backfield. They spread the field. And they clear out for Carnell Williams, who's a running back. He's the second receiver. He's going to clear out. He's going to run an in route. Tigers with three wide receivers left at the top of your screen. First down and goal. Turns and gives it off straight ahead. And this is Williams. Williams will go inside the five and he's down to the four. Alex Brown down at the bottom of that stack. Only a freshman, but he showed a lot of maturity on that play because Florida slanted the defense to the to this side. He saw that cut back behind the nose tackle and they picked up a couple of yards. Seven plays, 78 yards in this drive. A drive now almost four minutes long. Coach Spurrier looking on as we're about to go with their eight minutes left in the ball game. Wondering what can we do right here? We're going to stop this touchdown. Williams again behind his blockers. Ooh, he's going to be gang tackled about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Good gang tackling. Kennard Ellis, the left defensive end, the senior out of Orlando, is the man who led the charge. Also, Davis was there, the middle linebacker. Third down play, it's important now, don't, don't get this one picked off because you want three. They may take a timeout because they looked a little confused in there. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Auburn will call a timeout to talk over this third down play, so we'll take it with them. 7.21 left in the ballgame, Auburn 20 and Florida 20. Right back. UCLA hosted Washington, Michael played in Miami, and the Mariners wonder what hit them in Cleveland. Join me and Dan Patrick, Sports Center after football. So we're back at Jordan Hare Stadium, Florida 20, Auburn 20, 721 showing on the clock. And the situation we have right now is the ball's on the five-yard line of Florida. The Auburn Tigers with a third down and goal. No, I'm sure John Hope has talked to his defensive ball club about Tim Carter right here. Carnell Williams is the tailback. Three wide receivers go left. He may try to hit him on a draw. Going to be a quarterback draw. Quarterback running and Cobble score. Flag is down. Mike, I'm not sure they had enough men at the line of scrimmage, did they? They split out what's usually a tip-off to the draw is they, Tim Carter was about two yards from the sideline. Illegal formation on the offense. On the right Seven side, the, the man who should have been on the line of scrimmage third down. took a step back. Now you got to be a little leery now. I, I believe you'll probably see Tim Carter here. So the play comes in and they break the huddle. Plenty of time on the play clock. 13, now 12. Here's Carter. He's the middle receiver right here. They may clear out here and bring him under. Cobb, pressure, hit from behind, fumbles the ball, kicks it in, is recovered by Florida in the end zone. That's a touchback. Alex Brown. Spec big plays. The amazing thing here is with the ball being kicked forward and recovered in the end zone Todd Johnson makes the recovery but Auburn comes away with no points it's a touchback. Well as we 
said, he hasn't made a mis mistake tonight. Alex Brown with a great play, coming from behind and stripping the football. Number 13, you're going to see him roar up the field now. He's passed being blocked. Now he comes from behind with a great effort, Ron, to strip that ball out of the, out of the quarterback's hands. Todd, a great play. Boy, I'm telling you, first turnover of the night against the Auburn Tigers. Florida has committed four this evening, but put a huge asterisk by that one. Grossman gets it out of the flat. Has it complete? Robert Gillespie, and I'll tell you, every time Robert has come out of the backfield, a guy by the name of Rashad Walker has just been his running mate. He's just been all over it. When he comes out toward the sideline, the safety jump him. When he goes over the ball, the linebackers jump him. Shows you a little bit of respect for Robert Gillespie coming out of the backfield as a receiver. Boy, Alex Brown, that was an All-American play. Blitz, pass overthrown, he was looking, it's Callier who was putting the pressure on him. Wanted Gaffney right in front of the Auburn bench. As you look at Alex Brown on the sideline. Ron, you expect your best players to come up with big plays in big situations. But watch his effort as he comes from behind. He just reaches out, stretches out his entire body to strip that football. Another smart play was manual, hit the quarterback so he couldn't go forward and make the recovery. Third down, they need to take it to the 30-yard line. Here comes the blitz. He is hit as he throws, and it's incomplete, and that's Reggie Torber. And Reggie Torber with a big play, and Auburn's had big plays all night out of the defense. Now the adventure begins again. All right, let's Running keep a football. very close eye. Rob Roberts, who is the fullback, is the man who handles the snapping. And as we check through the glasses, yep, he'll be doing it again. You saw him warming up on the sidelines earlier. Matt Leach, probably in his mind saying, please let this one come airborne to me. Gets a good one. Here's his punt. Wobbly spiral, taken by Hood at the 31. 40, 45, and out to the 46, and the Auburn Tigers are going to have very good field position with 6.05 left in the ball game. 45 yards to the punt. There's a timeout. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. Tied at 20, 6.05 to go. Auburn has the ball. And let's show you a graphic here that uh, is very telling. Florida's offense against Kentucky, against Mississippi State, against LSU, and tonight, 311 yards. And John Lovett, the defensive coordinator, his staff with a great plan against Florida. I'll tell you what, though, Florida has held the Auburn Tigers to 185 total yards, but now's the time they've got to stop them. This is the stat that's going to count in tomorrow's newspapers. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Ian Scott got a hand on it. Damon Duvall won the game last week against Mississippi State. They say in warm-up he was kicking it 50 yards into the wind, so... He's probably got to get to the 33-yard line, 32-yard line, a little closer. You know, Mike, on that last one, I think the wind is blowing more decisively across than uh -huh. it was at the beginning. Because you saw the way that ball hooked on that 32-yarder he hit a minute ago. I mean, it went zip off to the left as soon as it went through the uprights. They need at least 25 yards here to get down the field. Moore loses the ball, recovered by Florida. Nateel, two turnovers in the last two minutes by the Auburn Tigers could prove costly in what has been an extremely valiant effort. Now the defense back on the field. Here's the fumble. Ball in the draw, and I don't think he ever got the ball. And the lineman pulling, that was Crittenden, may have caused that a little bit of confusion that he didn't get that football because he was right on the lineman when he got to football and didn't bring it in. So turnovers, four to four, Auburn two, and both have come in just the last couple of minutes. Gators, they run the reverse. This is Jacobs 
tries to turn the corner, breaks off one tackle, and all of that is going to wind up being a gain of two as Roger Hood will make the tackle. Auburn has been extremely well schooled in every running play that Florida has tried to run tonight. Number two, the Florida Gators taking on the Auburn Tigers from Auburn, Alabama. And five minutes and 30 seconds and counting. That's what we have left in this one. And Auburn trying to pull the upset, but a turnover, in fact, two of them in just the last couple of moments. Let's see if the Gators can move it to within range for field goal or if they can put it in the end zone to ice this one away and head back to Gainesville. They've been able to throw the curls all evening against the Auburn defense. Pick up the blitz nicely, Gaffney. Boy, you could yeah. see the cushion that they were giving him on the far sideline. Hood was off of him, what, four yards? Remember the stop and go That's route. That's right. And he went <laughs> ran by, and they caught a cold, so they're not going to get behind Roderick Hood. First down. The Gators move the change. The ball resting now at the 38-yard line. And Tommy Tuberville's got to be thinking, what if, what if, what if? But a couple of them particularly, a fumble by the quarterback, Cobb, that was fumbled into the end zone and recovered by Florida for a touchback. And now a fumble just a couple of moments ago by the running back, Moore. And the Gators are trying to come away with points. Direct snap. Direct snap, and Single it's going to be a running play to Gillespie. And he will take it forward to the 35-yard line. Carlos Rogers making the tackle. They're trying anything to run the football. Reverse, direct snap to Gillespie, try to confuse Auburn's defense, uh, try to get him outside. Now the flag is down. Illegal formation on the offense. Had a lot of that tonight. Receivers not being on the First ball down. or off the ball. Rex Grossman, the quarterback, looks to the sideline, moves away. Now you get the single wing. He's got to be the slowest receiver out there. <laughs> well, you could see Taylor Jacobs move up, but I guess they didn't say, and they said that he was not on the line of scrimmage. That's the reason for the flag. Grossman going to go deep with this one. That's Dansby. Who in the world was he throwing to, Mike? I didn't see a Florida receiver close. Dansby. Now, the coaches' stomachs, both sides have. There have been so many changes in this football game of emotions. Rex Grossman, see his left foot slipped out. And he couldn't get anything on the ball. See how okay. he threw that football? Yeah, he that's... couldn't get anything on the ball because he had Gaffney behind him, and he's trying to get it, but his left foot slipped, and he didn't get anything on the ball. Not enough hook. Intercepted. Cobb back in the field, and the running play hit right at the line of scrimmage. Adrian Karsten, what do you got for us down there? One of the most influential coaches on the Auburn sideline we're in standing right now tonight has been Ben Laird, graduate assistant. You know how many times we have seen him have up games and down games in this city, and Ron, it's his calming effect on Daniel Cobb, something that Ben himself learned from Damian Craig years ago when he was having some of those up and down times. Every single time that Daniel Cobb has come off, in any situation, Ben has been there to calm him down and help give him direction. Well, this Gator defense knows that this is the most important 350 that they will play this year. As Auburn has the ball and they're trying to snuff out this drive. Got it right over the middle. And that's Diamond, the tight end, across the 35 and out to the 40-yard line. Hartman on the tackle, but it's a first down for the Auburn Tigers. Delay has been there all night for Auburn. A little short pitch and catch to Lorenzo Diamond. Florida has two timeouts left, Ron. Auburn won. Last week against Mississippi State, Damon Duvall with the field goal that won it for the Auburn Tigers. Will it come down to that situation again tonight? Three minutes and 20 seconds. Clock is running. First down, the ball just shy of the 40-yard line. Cobb dumps it off. Has it completed? I mean immediately. Watt Walkins just gets upended. 
Ron, on that last play, Florida's secondary was very confused with the motion out of the backfield. You see them as they move, and we can only see one, but they did not cover the outside receiver. They still threw to Joe Watkins underneath. Second down and seven. Cobb, far sideline, has it complete. Gets by one tackler, gets by a second. McIntyre will have another first down for Auburn. Two minutes and 33 seconds left. Can't say enough about Daniel Cobb. Delivering the ball right on the money again to McIntyre. You look at Cobb, he is just another day of practice for him. David DeBall on the sideline, loosening up. Will it come down to his efforts? Williams, the deep man, a tailback. He gets the handoff, nothing in the middle. Gets to the outside on the left and gets by another tackler. 40, down to the 35, and that may be enough for another first down. approaching where they'll feel comfortable. 201 and now two minutes showing on the clock. Auburn to the line of scrimmage with a second down and one. Contact, flags, and this pass, what of a thrown. Looked like Scott made contact. We'll see if he was drawn. Boy, this would give Auburn a first down. First down, Auburn Tigers. This defense is not used to being on the field this much, and in these kind of situations, Auburn has taken it to him tonight. There's the manager talking to uh, the kicker. He's the only one to talk to. I, I start to say, and David DeBall is probably saying, will you get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be by myself. Flag is down as Williams is hit. That would have been a play for a loss. Kennard Ellis was right there. Before the snap, ball start on the offensive line. Five yard penalty. Adrian, uh, let's check with you quickly. Damon Duvall is in a world of his own right now, Ron. This will be the third week in a row. He may have a chance to win the game. He has retied that right shoe he's had ever since high school three times in the last two minutes. Right? <laughs> First and 15. Daniel Cobb with an audible, but have to hurry. Play clock is down to three, down to two. Going to be a quarterback draw. Nothing in the middle. Bounces to the outside and is going to be tackled around the 30s. That's around the 32-yard line. Under one minute left in the ball game. Off the line of scrimmage. If it were to happen right now, Mike, this would be into the win about a about a 50-yarder. And he hit him in pre-warm-up, pre-game warm-up from this spot. And the rain is starting to come. It is starting to blow and rain here in Auburn. Straight ahead, running play. Williams taking a man with him inside the 30. And he's down to the 26. Mike Mateel on the tackle. Adrian said it was going to rain <laughs> three hours ago. Right, now, this is in warm-up. Damon DeBall, and I'll consider he's kicking with the wind here, but this is a 64-yard attempt. And he just laces it right on through there. And we do know that into the wind that he kicked one from 50 in pregame warm-up. But I suggest to you again that the wind is different right now. I think it's stronger than it was in pregame warm-up. And now the holder in the center are going to have the, the distraction of, of rain coming down and possibly a wet football to handle.
Well, the timeout continues. This is last week against Mississippi State as uh, DeBall knocks this one home, and the Tigers got the win. Ron, they may even kick on third down here. Now, you'd like to get a couple more yards, but remember the adventure on kicking tonight. So snaps have not been good, so do you kick on third down or you try to get it a little closer? We're going to try to get it a little closer. Daniel Cobb comes with the offense from the timeout and out on the field. 23 seconds left in the ball game. Number two, Florida, 20. The Auburn Tigers, 20. And they'll go with the running play. Williams hit behind the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you, they're going to have to kick it from a couple of yards farther away. Sigh and a deep breath by Coach Spurrier because he knows it right now. Unless they get a special, special team play and get a block, that David Duvall is going to have an opportunity to win this football game in what would be one of the biggest upsets of this football season. Florida just used their last time out. Here's the interesting thing on the ball, and this may be more than 50, but he has made seven in a row from the 40 to 49 yard range, dating back to last season. And when you win a game as a kicker, you just get so much confidence. And so he's going out there knowing he won the game against Mississippi State last week. One kick, he could put a dagger in Florida. On the last field goal attempt, the last extra point, Florida got penetration they sure did. on the left side. So let's see if they get some penetration on this kick. Real close to blocking it inside the last time they kicked. Coming up next, Sports Center, Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen. Coming up immediately following our game. So this ball is going to be placed down at the 34-yard line. A 44-yard attempt from square in the middle of the field. Damon DeVall, can he win it for the Auburn Tigers? Good pass. Ball is down. Hooking right through. He got it. see the water coming down he handled it nicely got the perfect spot and right now with 10 seconds showing on the clock the Auburn Tigers just 10 ticks away from pulling an absolutely huge upset not only for the SEC but in the national picture and let's go down to the sideline Adrian Karsten David Duvall just came off the field told Daniel Cobb Dan I've never kicked the ball so hard in my life Ron he admitted before we went on the field the win and the rain coming down, as he did in the previous field goal attempt, he figured he had to hook it in. He, he knew he had to get up high quickly, but the wind was going to take it, so he had to try and hook it in for the third week in a row. He may win the game for Auburn. Adrian, he did that, and that's one of the reasons it's hard to tell until the ball gets over the goalpost because he hooks virtually every ball, but in this position, a huge crosswind, and you got to give the youngster credit. That's a heck of a kick from 44 yards. the 25. Clock runs. Four seconds. And now it stops. Dansby on the tackle. Florida will have one opportunity. Four seconds to try to get a play in the end zone or the number two team is going to go down in defeat. It's been a well-played game and I think Auburn won this football game with their defense a 
against the run. They forced Florida into become a one-dimensional. Grossman rolls the pocket. Flag is down. Now laterals it back. Picked up by Starks. And Starks is tackled, and the game is over. We do have a flag on the play. Students are running on the field. Bill Goss. You're with Coach Tuberville. Take it away. One of the biggest upsets of this college football season. What would you do without Damon Duvall three weeks in a row? I don't know. I'm, I tell you, the whole football team, offensively, we didn't play great. Damon made it, made it when we needed it. Our defense played super. I'm proud for the entire group. What a great win. Coach, congratulations, Damon, for the third week in a row. This is becoming a lot. It feels great, but, you know, our defense played the whole game. We, we, I give the credit to this one to defense. You know, Florida's got great offense. Defense came. Congratulations to you both. Enjoy the win. Well, now it's time for a monster play of the game, and it doesn't take much to figure out what the monster play is going to be. It was Damon Duvall just a little bit ago. 44 yards, started out way to the right and hooks it right through. And the game winner by Damon Duvall, our monster play of the game. One of the greatest efforts I've ever seen on a defensive football team. Crowd was into this. you got to give Tommy Tuberville, the staff, a great uh, pat on the back because it's a great job for Auburn tonight. Final score, Auburn 23, Florida 20. Coming up next at Sports Center and for extended postgame coverage here in Auburn, turn over to ESPN News for interviews, commentary, and analysis of Auburn's victory. Plus the final game stats and quotes on ESPN.com. For Mike Gottfried and Adrian Carson and our entire crew. I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Auburn wins it 23 to 20. Good night, everybody.